Uh, my name is Jason Maelstrom. Um, don't have any slides, so I'm just going to kind of cowboy this and hope I remember all my points. Uh, a senior DevOps engineer over at Salsify, we enable brands to win on the digital shelf. And brands mean big companies and convincing big companies to um, allow us to handle their data, which means we're SOX2 compliant, which in theory puts a wedge between dev and ops. Um, I'm on that ops side of that wedge. Um, and so the problem, other problem is, is we love microservices. We have Kubernetes and developers want to start a lot of new microservices so we can sell more stuff. So the problem is they put in a lot of tickets to ops and this annoys us. But the even bigger problem is we become a bottleneck so they aren't able to get their stuff into testing. And then we were thinking, well, it's testing, Who? that's okay. So um, we decided, like, a lot of our tools seem to have inputs. You know, Helm has values. Um, we use JSONnet to make Kubernetes files. Um, CloudFormation has values. A lot of this stuff is just input. Why don't we make a form? We have this Jenkins sitting around. You know, we, we have Circle CI for doing testing, but we still have Jenkins sitting here. So let's make a nice little form for developers to fill out. A um, lot of our web tools um, have APIs, so we can write some things to set up the service in there. That works. And um, for the things that are generating code, it turns out like Git is kind of scriptable. So you, you, know, you can just throw a push, pull request. So we developed this system so developers could just put what they wanted. It would spin up their service right into um, Kubernetes with all the like RDS and S3 they want. And then we would just on the back end approve their PR for you know, some SOX2 stuff. Then we started thinking, hmm, why can't they just you know, put into production themselves? Um, so we ended up inventing some rules. Instead of like doing the PR on the post, we said, okay, we'll have to approve your PR before it actually launches there. And then we decided, well, if it's your microservice is actually facing the internet, we probably should have a conversation and do like a security checklist. Um, and then we're like, well, we also want to ensure your uh, GitHub repo actually has some guardrails on it. Um, and has branch protection, a few things like that. So we're able to make this into like one big, it's a pretty ugly looking script, but it runs other scripts. And now you know, developers can actually push out to their services without relying on us. We have to only approve a PR, right? Instead of like copying from a ticket into a form into run tools. And we didn't have the best tools. We're actually still working on um, improving them. We want to you know, go to Terraform, but Instead of thinking about the tools, we're thinking, oh, what can our current tools do? Uh, a lot of times we get stuck, like, do I have the best tools or not? That doesn't really matter. Um, think about what can my tools do? And then other people, they get stuck about, oh, we're socks too. We can't give developers access to put things in production. But I always encourage you, with whatever re regulatory compliance you have to do, uh, don't think why I can't. Think of why I can. And maybe you can't do 100% but 90% or 80% is way better than 0%. And if you can remove bottlenecks and pain points for uh, the people you support, that's a good thing. Um, so that was the very quick six-month journey we took, um, bottled down, and thank you.